this movie is a ball of fun. So strap yourself in, buckle up your seatbelts, and just go along for the ride because you're in for a hell of a ride. Mayhem. This is going to be a good day. It's a scream, baby! What is up, everyone? My name is Joe, and this is Different Take. If you're new to the channel, make sure to subscribe, and remember to click the bell so you don't miss out on any new content. Let me know down in the comment section below what you thought of Mayhem, if you've seen it, and also let me know your favorite crazy-ass, chaotic, fun movie. Yeah, that. <laughs> What better way to celebrate hitting the 500 subscriber mark than to talk about this crazy ass movie? Because this was awesome. And by the way, thank you all so much for the 500 subscribers. It's just, I never could have seen it coming in seven months and hey, here we are. So thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Mayhem is a 2017 action comedy horror movie starring Steven Yoon and Samara Weaving and was directed by Joe Lynch. Here's the plot and it's great. A law firm office goes under quarantine after a mysterious and dangerous virus spreads through the building. The effects of the virus? Say hello to the ID7 virus. Stress hormone levels rise, causing inhibitions to drop and basic instincts to rise to the surface. All traces of the virus should be eliminated in approximately eight hours. What are we supposed to do for the next eight hours? Try to remain calm. As you'd imagine, chaos erupts throughout the entire office as the infected office workers begin acting out their wildest impulses. Hey, extreme measures, right? So all these office workers are locked in their work building and they have every sensation elevated with no self-control, no impulse control. This is genius. Why the f did I think of this? This is my new favorite movie. It's, it's perfect. It's at least perfect for the coronavirus and everything going on, like the lockdown and everything. And if you've ever worked in an office setting, an office building, this is perfect, you can relate 100%. And honestly, you don't need to have worked in an office just to get this movie or be able to relate to this movie. Even if you're like a construction worker or a teacher or if you worked in retail, you can relate to the politicking and the ass kissing and the different drama and the hierarchies and dealing with different, all the procedures that you gotta go through through different people and everything. It plays out very much the same for every job that you have. So uh, it's just, it's great. It's great to sort of see it all play out. As crazy as the movie is, ironically, it still somehow plays out just like a typical work day. <laughs> like if you're watching this movie, if you read between the lines and you kind of just look through all the bullshit and see how everything sort of plays out and all the politics and all that stuff, it's just like an average work day. It's just another day. Before the coronavirus and everything, it was perfect for people just being frustrated with work and the bullshit politics and the ass kiss network. Now with everything going on, it's perfect for everyone. Everyone can watch this movie and be able to relate to it in some sort of way because whether you're by yourself or you're with a bunch of people in a house or an apartment or with a few people, you are gonna go at each other and just it's just funny to sort of see. This movie is just a ball of fun. It's it's just it's so much fun. It's just balls to the wall, wild and crazy kid shit going on right here. But it's just it's so much fun. The acting in this movie is just it's great. I mean everybody plays their part so well. You have characters in this movie that play these roles that are so common in the workplace. I mean you have the boss and the siren, which is the, the manipulator who's in the boss's ear, which you can't trust and is manipulative and just gets what they want. And then you have the reaper, which is the HR person, which is hilarious and it's dead on too. You would think with human resources, HR, they make it out to be that they're there for you, but they usually are just there to sort of play the middle ground and just kind of go, 
Yeah, and they just sided with the company anyway, so it, it was played perfectly. You have everybody from the IT people to the assistants, and everybody is just dead on with their characters, and they all stand out, and they all are just memorable. It's great, it really is, they did a hell of a job. Steven Yeun is great in this movie, and he really plays that role really well of like the person who's just sort of quiet, who does their work, is likable, so when something happens to him, you're empathetic, and he can kind of go the funny route too. Though he can, he, he's he's got a pretty good range, so he's perfect for this role. But Samara Weaving steals the show in this movie, like she doesn't. It seems like every movie. You can tell that when they casted her in Ready or Not, which came out last year, that they most likely saw her in this movie and they saw her in The Babysitter on Netflix, and they were just like. Perfect. She's so, I mean, talk about her range of like just emotions, just she's able to connect with a viewer like Steven Yoon, but she plays the role of like just going batshit crazy and just off the wall quirky so well. And she just makes you laugh and it's just, it, she's unique. She really is unique. I now know when I fell in love with Samara Weaving, it's in this movie. I thought it was in The Babysitter, but it, it wasn't, it was in this movie. You first see her in this movie and you're kind of like, oh, like there's Samara Weaving and she plays her role well in that scene that she has. And then when you see her again, you just see her doing this. Anything that they do. Nice that I'll have your balls for dinner for that shit, you It's like, what the fuck is she doing? This is awesome. Then she says this. Top three bands, go. Motorhead. Uh oh. DRI and early Amtrak's. Oh. Metal till I fucking puke. My heart. Oh. And then she does this. Big Matthew's band is actually- important. Other way, asshole, go turn around. Yep, you got it. And this was just the best. It's an intro. Annihilation. Gonna get ya. That is awesome. She's awesome. Not to mention this line right here. Well, sometimes you gotta say what the fuck. Make your move. She's just awesome. There's even parts that are just so spontaneous where she's just off the wall. Meg! Yeah, Meg! <laughs> Just because of the fact that this virus makes these people just bat shit off the wall, she's able to sort of just do whatever, I think. I don't think there's, there's times in this movie where I just don't think there were lines in there that they were just kind of just letting them sort of just run with it. And she took the ball and ran with it. Uh, at least you're not that guy. Move aside, pussies, come on. Just little things like this. I would rather two glass and little things like that freak show has some super good quality shoes these are comfy as fuck and just little small off the wall comments like this <laughs> now it's a party oh my god yes it just makes her character so endearing and is really it her as an actor it, she just has this charisma and quirkiness that you just don't see a lot and she's awesome. Isn't she lovely? Isn't she wonderful? Isn't she precious? The directing is solid. You can tell that when he needed to focus on certain things, he focused in on it. And then when he needed to let the actors sort of let loose a little bit, he, he did. And he had a clear vision of what he was doing, Joe Lynch, the director. He had a clear vision of what he wanted and he just executed really well. It's well written because even though it's like a balls to the wall, crazy movie, underneath all that craziness is a commentary on the economy and the workplace and the politicking and ass kissing in the workplace and all the bullshit hoops you gotta jump through and all that stuff. And you actually care for these characters in this movie too. So. It's, they did a good job. The pacing is great. There's never a dull moment in this movie, but it doesn't move too quick. 
to where is you can't keep up. Sometimes movies are fast paced and they're quick. You can't keep, you just, you're losing track of what's going on. Where you're just like watching it and you're like, what, 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 what the hell did I just miss? Like, what's going on now? I, there's a person, I, I don't know what's happening. This movie doesn't do that. It's quick, but you can keep track of what's going on. It's not too complicated. The tone in this movie is spot on. There's times when people try to make these kinds of movies and it just numbs the mind. Like there's just so much going on on screen and just so much being thrown at you that you're just like, I can't keep up. And it's just, it's sensory overload and uh, whatever. I, I'm not feeling anything one way or the other. They don't do that in this movie. They balance it really well. I mean, it feels fun. At the same time, you can understand the characters, you can understand the commentary that's going on a little bit. You can read between the lines and sort of see that. And it's just balanced really well. It's just wild, it's crazy, it's funny, it's just, it's just fun. The practical effects are good, but I, I'm not gonna lie to you, I was expecting way more practical effects like blood and guts and gore and all that sort of stuff like in your typical horror movie like this, but there wasn't really that much. Now that I think about it, after the first time I watched it, I was like, man, that was awesome. That was pretty violent, which it, it is violent. But then I watched it again and I noticed, I was like, huh, I don't, it was violent, but I don't think there was a whole lot of gore involved, like, or like practical effects of like, of like blood and gut. Like, I don't even, hmm. And then I watched it a third time. I did watch it a third time because I liked it that much. I watched it like three times in like two days. But I watched it a third time and I noticed that a lot of times when someone's being hit or stabbed or whatever, there's like an edit, like a quick cut to like a different camera angle. And you don't necessarily see what's going on. You kind of, you hear it. And that plays into the sound. The sound effects are great. The sound effects really contributed to the violence that you see on the screen. You think you're seeing more than you actually are. So there's not a whole lot of, there's blood but there's not a whole lot of like practical effects and gore. It's just, you're just, you, you just don't see it. It's, it's a nice little trick, which is fine. You don't need it. This movie proves that you don't need to show all that to be violent. This movie doesn't do anything amazing in particular. It just does everything really well. And it's, to be honest with you, it's not really trying to amaze you. It's just trying to be crazy wild fun with a nice little commentary on people being fed up with the economy and the politicking and ass kissing and drama at work. It's almost like the movie's like, we're fed up, we know you're fed up. Here's something fun to watch to kind of let loose a little bit. Another thing this movie does really well is that they utilize their strengths properly. The plot and the whole premise and the characters, it carries this movie, but they're aware of that. So they lean on their strengths. They lean on the plot on the premise and they lean on their two main characters and the other characters as well, but mainly Steven Yeun and Samara Weaving. But they don't lean too much. They don't depend on them. It's just enough. It's very balanced. It's just really good. I highly recommend this movie. I love this movie. I know I don't consistently do a rating system. Maybe I should start doing it consistently. I just don't care for them too much because my opinions can kind of change over time. But if I were to go with a rating for this movie out of five stars. I probably give it four out of five. It's just an excellent movie. So it's on um, Amazon streaming service uh, Shudder, which is like their horror movie streaming service. I would definitely watch it on there. If you don't have Shudder, then you can do a couple day free trial and just cancel it after that. It's free, so why not? And if you don't want to do that, just rent it. It's worth renting. So. Definitely check it out. That's my thoughts on Mayhem. I just wanna say a big thank you to everyone who is subscribing to the channel, watching the videos, commenting on videos, and just engaging in the conversation. I started this channel because I wanted to connect with people who enjoyed movies as much as I do. So to see it grow to 500 subscribers in just seven months, it's really cool. I'm extremely grateful. And I just wanna say thank you to everyone out there who's supporting the channel and watching and commenting and subscribing and everyone. Just thank you all so, so much. I can't thank you enough. I'm just excited to see where this channel is gonna go and I'm excited just to have you all along for the ride. 
So thank you all so much. If you like this video, don't forget to like and subscribe. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you for the 500 subscribers. Hopefully we can get to uh, a thousand for the end of the year. And I will see you in the next one. Thank you, Selena. Take it away.